What is going on today guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the show. I hope you all are having a good one. I have in my hands a package and within that package might be one of the best things you can get for your car. So let's open it and I'll show you what it is. Okay, normally I do like a stabby poke open, but I'm gonna be an adult about this because the thing that's in here is kind of fragile. So we're gonna open it carefully. Here it is folks, an ultra gauge smaller than I expected. So y'all are probably wondering, what the heck did he just pull out of that box? This is called an ultra gauge. It's a digital gauge monitor for your cars. Come on off, come on off. Ooh. And I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot smaller than I was expecting. I was expecting it to be mostly the size of my phone and it's not. Anyways, let's take this thing down to my car and I'll show you exactly why this is the most important thing you could get for your car. Y'all hear that rattling? No, of course it stops. Anyways, my exhaust is sitting and rattling against my rear chassis brace. <laughs> it's really annoying. Well, I was gonna show you how to set it up, but I think I'm gonna have to wait for this thing to stop doing that because yeah, you don't wanna listen to this the entire time I'm talking. Shut up! So I've gone ahead and gotten it mounted. And I absolutely love the windshield mount they give you because you can literally stick the ultra gauge wherever you want. I've got mine stuck up behind my phone mount so that the ultra gauge is popping out right here next to my phone. So I can still see my phone and I can see the ultra gauge perfectly fine. Now ideally I'd have that mount just a little bit lower but my university parking pass goes there. And they said those parking passes have to be in the lower driver's side corner of the windshield. So what can you do? Now as for cables, this is a wired OBD2 mount as you can see. So you do have to deal with them. So what I've got is my cables running down here through this little crack right here. And then I've got this kick panel right here. And I've got all the extra cables just sitting right behind that kick panel. That's the amount of extra cable you get. It'll fit in basically any car or truck and still be able to reach your OBD2 port. What I did in my car was I just tucked this right up in there. So I used to use this old VPeak wireless scanner and an app on my phone, but I upgraded to the Ultra Gauge for three main reasons. First off, it's a three hertz refresh rate instead of a two hertz refresh rate, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're monitoring things like your timing advance or your air fuel ratio, you wanna have that updated as many times as possible per second. And also, because it's wired instead of wireless, there is no delay, which is really useful. Second, my phone would get hot and then the screen would dim and I actually wouldn't be able to see it while I was driving, which is always an issue. A lot of good gauges do when you can't see them. The third reason was so that I could have another app open on my phone, like my maps or my draggy data or stuff like that. And I don't have to worry about not being able to monitor my car's data. That being said, I'm not getting rid of this because this can do data logging and unfortunately the ultra gauge cannot. So it's still got a use. So the ultra gauge device itself has only three buttons. There's a menu button here, an up button, and a down button. And that's it. Everything is controlled with those three and the menu button also functions as your select button. So I've gone ahead and set up a few pages of displays here. I've got boost, timing, oil temperature, coolant temperature, intake temperature, and air fuel commanded ratio lambda. And then you can change to your second page by clicking the button on the bottom. There's just so many different things you can monitor in here. Like, look at this. There's so many different things you can monitor. Basically anything about your car, you can keep an eye on and make sure it doesn't go out of any of the specs that you want it to stay in. So there's a total of seven pages. However, I've got pages three through seven disabled because I only need the two of them. You change what's shown on the display by clicking menu, selecting gauge page menu, select gauge page, select gauges, select which menu you want to change. So I'm going to change three because I don't have anything on there. And then you select which one you want to pick. So let's do short term fuel trim bank one, select which position you want, and then click menu again to set it. Each page can display either four, eight, or six gauges. I personally like the look of six because it gives you two main ones to focus on and then four other ones that aren't quite as big a deal. Ultra Gauge has a really nifty little sheet that I'll flash up on screen here that shows you exactly where each lip position corresponds with on the different gauge clusters. So one of the coolest features that the Ultra Gauge has is alarms for each individual thing you can monitor. I can't get them to work right now because I'm not moving anywhere and I can't film while I'm driving. 
But trust me, they work and they are useful. I had it go off a couple times for battery voltage and it was really annoying. Now you might be wondering to yourself, what happens when it gets dark? That's a bright screen shining right in my face. Well, this right here is an ambient light sensor and when I cover it, you can see the screen dims and as soon as I uncover it, it brightens right back up. Really nifty, really useful. Some of the other things you can do with the gauge include clearing trouble codes and checking to make sure you don't have any pending codes. I've got none, which is good. Thank you for defocusing as soon as I show that camera. It also has performance monitors. And while those performance monitors are cool, I don't trust them a huge amount compared to the Draggy, but if you don't have a Draggy, they're amazing because it's a way for you to see your zero to 60 and how many feet it took. And with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this little informal overview about the Ultra Gauge. I really, I do recommend this for anybody that's got a modified car that can't run something like a Cobb access port or something like that, because it's only like 80 bucks and it basically monitors everything a Cobb can monitor and it does so pretty dang well from what I can tell. So this isn't gonna make a huge appearance on the channel. This is mainly just a peace of mind thing for me so that I don't blow up my car because as good of a video as that would be, um, my wallet can't afford that. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, goodbye.